All right, Shalom, man. Me and the brother want to start off these videos by giving all praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah by Shem Kakadash. All right, Yahweh, that's the true name of food today. Many call God. They will say Lord, Jehovah, um, Yahweh. But we do know his true name in the ancient Paleo Hebrew is Yahweh. All right, by Shem, it's how you say in the name of Yahweh Shai is the true name of food today. Many call Christ, Jesus, Yeshua, um, Yeshaya, and a plethora of other names. But we do know his true name, which is uttered in the Paleo ancient Hebrew tongue, is Yahweh Shah. So, you know, that's the true names of the Father and the Son. And we do send Shalom to the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, who consist of you Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, Salakia, and Hispanics. Okay, you guys will make up the nation of Israel in these uh, last days. And we do want to say um, double honors, much respect unto the elder apostles of Great Millstone. All right, those are the true teachers. Okay, right now of Israel, and we do want to say another shalom to you brothers, you Akim, who teach that same truth and doctrine, all right, with sincerity. So today, me and the brother, we just want to go into this quick sit down, touching on how our works is what's going to get us out of these perilous times which are coming on the planet Earth, you see? And I want to start, okay, real quick with 2nd Ezra chapter 9 and 9. Okay, 2nd Ezra chapter 9 i want to start actually slocky is 7 it says everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby you have believed shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders for i have sanctified them for me from the beginning so that's exactly what the most high yahweh bashim yahshah right now he's looking to see if you have works all right during this um during this period of peace and prosperity when there's nothing really going on he wants to see what are you gonna put on the forefront what are you gonna do in this time when you know there's no reason to seriously do the work like if you just look at it right. all right as a carnal mind you're gonna look at it and be like what profit do i have in doing this work what profit do i have in uh, uh losing my life going out and teaching okay sacrificing my time to study and to pray those type of things right now we can't see the profit in it you see like there's no you don't gain anything physically except for spiritual things and i mean you know the lord he will sustain you with what you need but definitely it's not like you're out here balling you know what i'm saying you're living your best life he's actually looking to see who is going to actually have faith enough to put their own life on hold and produce works you see that's what the yabba shim is looking for he's looking to see who has that type of faith to produce those type of works when he's really not shown us much all right he's not he's not giving us um you know actual sightings of angels you know we've never seen or heard his voice we, we've never seen uh a lot of the different things our forefathers have seen as a matter of fact real quick bro let me just get that scripture in the book of uh this is going to be the book of Second Ezra, chapter one, and I want to go and get thirty-five. It says, "Your houses will I give to another people, which shall come, which having not heard of me, yet shall believe me, to whom I have showed no no signs, yet they shall do as I have commanded them. They have seen no prophets, yet they shall call their sins to remembrance and acknowledge them. I take to witness the grace of the people to come, whose little ones rejoice in gladness." Though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirit they believe the things that I say. Exactly. So that's right. Right now, that's our generation. And there's a certain amount of people whom Yahweh Shem Yashai has preserved from the beginning. Because Second Ezra chapter 9, and I, I believe it was... Give me a second. Second Ezra chapter 9, and it was 8. It says that these people who shall be saved by their works and faith... They were actually sanctified from the beginning to believe, you see? And, and these specific people that you read about in 1st Ezra 1 and 35, when it says that they've seen no prophets and they basically, they haven't really seen much, but they still do the truth. Well, these are the same spirits that the Lord has sanctified from the beginning to do so. So they're going to be producing works even though they have not seen anything. Even though things right now don't seem, it doesn't seem very profitable, especially in Babylon the Great. To, to basically live your life according to this truth you see you got a precept yeah so here's mark chapter 12 and 41 and yahweh sat over against the treasury and behold how the people cast in money 
into the treasury, and many that were rich cast in much, and there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And he called unto his disciples, and saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast in more, slot hath cast more in, than all they which have cast in the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. <clears throat> so, you know, as we're going in this video, you know, we're going into how, how, you know, your works do matter, it shows your faith. And this woman, all right, when Yahusha had seen her, she cast in the least, all right, probably the least of all who are, who are, who are putting treasure into the treasury but she had put in the most all right because she put in all that she had those two right. mites mm -hmm. was all that she had so that that's like what we have to do all right you know what, what little we have we have to you know put into this truth all right and do you know do do the lord's will okay. all right making these videos and stuff okay. you know even though it doesn't seem like much it really is it's a lot more than we think okay. it's like you know basically the elect represents that woman you know the Lord's only asking that you give basically your body, everything that you got, as far as, you know, that little that you that you got, which is, you know, your uh, your body, your mind, and your spirit. You know, that's what the elect have done. They've basically given themselves the little that they have, you see, over back to Yahabashim Yahshua, even if it's as little as just repenting now, you know, as little as now, um, you know, making themselves a living sacrifice. That's more pleasing in the sight of the Heavenly Father than somebody who's just given all of their tithe and offering, you see? All right. And, and this is gonna be Sirach chapter 29. I wanna get 11. Lay up treasure according to the commandments of the Most High, and it shall bring thee more profit than gold, you see? So right now, we are laying up treasures in the spiritual realm, right? We're laying up treasures right now with the Most High. Yeah, how about you, we're getting We're getting favor with them right now by, by the little things, all right? By just basically acknowledging him in all of our ways those type of things the lord looks at yeah. all right praying to the heavenly father all right looking at looking at your brother um and, and, and forgiving him you see because a lot of people in the world they don't they don't look at forgiveness as as something big you see or being tender-hearted toward one another giving alms to brothers even if you yourself are down you're still giving little little bits to other brothers so that because you have faith enough to believe that even the Lord gonna get you back what you gave to them you see mm. you see uh, uh, sacrificing your time man to to, to read all right to make videos all these different type of things bro our works all right and these things are pleasing to Heavenly Father all right you're learning about him you're learning about his true nature man all right you're basically losing your your whole life you're losing a lot of things bro opportunities you're losing time so that you can learn about what's pleasing to him and these are the things that and he sees as faithful all right your wife if she was doing these things like she was really trying to figure out okay what makes him like what what does he like right and she basically made herself like unto you you see now that's a woman who's really trying to please her husband all right and, and those little things are the things that the husband looks for he doesn't even care if the woman makes okay uh, uh six <laughs> figures a year or if you know or if she's the most responsible woman or whatever bro she got all these cars or she's a hard worker as far as being an independent woman like dudes don't even care about that they care about the little things with it when it comes to the woman all right see and that's what the lord looks at as us too he, he needs to be rich and famous he looks to see whether we are contrite humble and you know we, we do what's pleasing to him we live our life to please him you see which is majority of the video we try to talk on is, you know, in the day of trouble, these works that you're putting in, just know, although right now it's hard to see the benefit, you're going to see the benefit, right? You're going to see it in that day. Right. So this is real quick. I got this in Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2 and 9. It says, They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth and shall be, and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his saints, and he hath care for his elect. You see? So this is all about the Lord's elect. And the Lord's elect are going to be the only ones who are going to be able to trust and understand this. You see? Understand the little things for the Lord. You see? 
and, and be faithful because he has mercy to his saints and he cares for his elect. He only cares for those elect, man, okay? You see, he's, he's actually making us perfect right now. A lot of these people are not going through trials or tribulations and, you know, the Lord's not, the Lord's not dealing with them as far as giving them any type of understanding. So he's not perfecting them as far as what they're going to really need in the days to come. This is 2nd Ezra 9 and 22. Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain, and let my grape be kept, yeah. and my plant for great labor have I made it perfect. Right. So the multitudes, man, these are people, a lot, the, the majority of people who really don't understand, man, they're going to perish because that's what they were created to do, was to be vain and perish. But ultimately, his grape, which is his elect, they're going to be kept because he's making, he's basically, it's like a vineyard, and the Lord is in this vineyard, and he has this small orchard that he's dealing with you see and he's trying to make that orchard perfect so that he can bring out the best wine you see you see so right now he's dealing with Israel he's dealing with those elect they're actually in that garden right they're in that that garden that's separated off from everything else like the weeds and whatnot all right the Lord basically goes through his garden and takes all the weeds out which represents these other people all right but he, he has his orchard his, his garden bed and he's making that perfect right now, right? Watering it right. And, and giving it sunlight and basically taking care of it, which is talking about us. He's watering us with his living water. He's giving us life. He's basically giving us everything we need, the right sunlight, right? The right amount of everything. He's not giving us too much. He's not giving us too little. Because if you overwater your plants, then plants are just going to drown. If you don't water them enough, they'll die. So the Lord's basically teaching us a lot, man, balance. He's teaching us endurance. He's teaching us okay how to endure basically so you know this is this is very profitable all right it might just be a mindset right now but this is actually going to manifest into actual reality all right appreciate sure. <laughs> it here's second address chapter 8 and 41 it says speaking on what you were speaking on for as a husbandman so so with much seed upon the ground and planteth many trees and yet the thing that is sown in his season cometh not up mm -hmm. Neither, neither doth all that is planted take root. Even so, it is of them that are sown in the world. They shall not all be saved. <clears throat> I answered then and said, If I have found grace and grace, let me speak. Like as a as a husbandman's seed perisheth, if it come not up, and receive not thy rain in due season, or if there come too much rain, and it corrupt it, even so perisheth man also which is formed with thy hands and is called thy own image because thou art like unto him mm. for whose sake thou hast made all things mm. and liken him unto the husbandman's seed all right that's really talking about israel to be real but like uh edris was saying all right breaking down with uh the angel i said you know the lord he he lays down he pretty much plants seeds in the ground but not all of those seeds are finna grow. All right, some might get too much rain. All right, and some may get too little rain. And therefore, you know, those ones die off. But really, the Lord's looking for, for the ones that do grow because he, he's going to give those seeds just the right amount of everything. Okay. Like this brother was going into. So that that tree or that olive olive plant or, 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 or grape, grape plant, that one is a resemblance of the elect, all right, who who do who do what the Lord had told them to do. And then they start to bring forth fruit, right? And that's their works, you see? So, you know, ultimately you're going to start bringing forth those those fruits and you're going to be uh, profitable to the Heavenly Father in some way. So all these other people right now, when they're living their lives, bro, you in that day, Lord willing, you're going to be able to use the Heavenly Father as your, your, your hedge of protection. You see, you're going to be able to call on his name in that day when a lot of people are not going to be able to because they never developed any type of personal uh, relationship with the Heavenly Father, you see? Because we're called friends, you know? Yeah, exactly, man. The Lord looks at us in a whole different light. All right, we're, we are like his friends. We are people he He knows, you see? Because mm -hmm. like, you, you keep your friends close, you know? Mm -hmm. You keep them in your circle and really, you know... We we become we're, we're like we're trying to become like the Most High, you know, uh, like miniature Yahweh's, you know. And and going to that precept that you said that we're gonna be like friends of the Heavenly Father. You got that precept? Yeah, you know the wisdom. Mm -hmm. That's why that's why earlier I was trying to say that we have uh, 
the most high sees everything in a different light and we have that spirit all right the most high within us so ultimately we see things we're, we're you you will see things in a different light too because right, you're gonna you're gonna be you're gonna see eye to eye like that's basically the people that you really are cool with is is those who are like like-minded you know right friends because if you got somebody who's who who does not understand your mindset and you, and they don't understand your mindset it's like you guys are never gonna understand each other you know and it's gonna be a lot of friction and, and ultimately you, you guys are gonna piss each other off you know because somebody esteems something more than the other person esteems it and the other person doesn't really see it see it as important you know and, and those little things are just like we, this doesn't go together you see and you end up you have, you end up having this hate relationship you see so you have to be on the same mind as Yahweh Shah, you see right because because I mean Yahweh and Yahweh Shah, yeah relationships really uh well you know relationships that are close really they come they come forth more through common interests you know so your common interest would be wisdom but here's wisdom of solomon 7 uh 7 and 27 it says and being but one and this is speaking about wisdom and being but one she can do all things and remaining in herself she maketh all things new and in all ages entering the holy souls she maketh them friends of God and prophets. For God loveth none but him that mm. dwelleth with wisdom. That's right. Yep. Mm -hmm. What's that one? Yeah, so the Lord, man, he said he loveth none but him that dwelleth with wisdom. So you got to understand, no, the Lord, God doesn't love everybody, man. He only loves and cares about those who basically use wisdom, right? Who are who are basically doing his commandments. Who are basically having those works. Who, are, who understand his truth. You see? So that's the only things that the Lord cares about is if you have that spirit in you. So you you gonna stand out in the world, yeah. But at the same time, bro, it, 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 the Lord looks at you a totally in a totally different light, you know. So imagine you calling on the Lord in that day, and you didn't have wisdom. You see, the Lord not gonna care. He doesn't care about you, so he's not gonna answer you. But say somebody who was doing the Most High's will, and the Lord knows this person. And this person is beloved by him and he's a friend of the heavenly father well you think the lord's just gonna forsake him all right you think the lord's not gonna hear him in that day no in the days to come up when all hell breaking loose everybody else is weeping and sorrowful it says that the elect are going to be married and they're going to have abundance you see and this all comes because of our, our mindset and because of our faith which is shown through our works you see yeah this is um second Ezra chapter 8 and 49 it says in the it is in this also thou art marvelous before the most high and that thou hast humbled thyself as it becometh thee and does not judge thyself worthy <clears throat> to be glorified among the righteous for many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter times shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride but understand for thyself and seek out the glory for such as be like thee you know so right man right now the heavenly father's you know, he's actually we're known of we're known of him, right? Low willing, but because you're doing these things and you're understanding it and you're having faith, even though it looks crazy in these times, right? Well, the Lord sees that you're struggling still, but you still are holding on to that faith. You see, you still trust in him, even though he might be putting you through hell. All right, but you still love him, man. You still trust in him. We'll tell you in Job, though he slay me, yeah, I will. I will trust in him. I, I believe. That was paraphrased, but even even though Job was going through all that hell, man, and, and yet he did not give up on the Most High. He, even though he didn't understand and it didn't make sense, he still believed and he still, you know, stayed true, all right, to the Heavenly Father. So he, he was marvelous in the sight of the Most High, and though it was bad at first, the, end, the latter end was was great. Let me just read this mm -hmm. in Proverbs eight: They are all plain to him that understand, and right to them that find knowledge. Right, so you know the the Lord gave the Lord the Lord gave the elect the eyes to see. All right, the whole the whole picture, the whole puzzle. All right, and as for as for the people in the world, they'll see one that that one piece of the puzzle and think that don't make no sense. All right, because when Noah was out there prophesying and doing what he had to do, the people didn't see none. They didn't see nothing wrong with with, with what was happening. All right, in, the, in Chronicles, when the Lord told. All right, the children of Israel to start singing. All right, in the midst of war. All right, when the Edomites, the Moabites, and Ammon was going up against them, they just had to sing. All right, and trust in the Most High. So, 
law can have you do some things that don't make no sense but in the end all right the end result will come out to you being delivered or you having you know you being delivered pretty much you know uh, all right and having a greater a greater cause so yeah that's that right there god i got this in revelations real quick chapter uh three and ten <clears throat> it says give me a second revelations three and ten okay it says because i was kept the word of my patience i will also keep thee from the hour of temptation we shall come upon the whole world to try them that dwell upon the earth. See, so uh, Yahweh Shai said that because we have kept this word of his patience, however long it may be, you can have been enduring this thing for 30 plus years, 20 plus years, or you could be new, but it, this, the, this starts whenever you come into the truth. You see, whenever you are awoken, it, if you can endure from that point to the end, you will be kept from the hour of temptation, you see. Or, or however, you know, the Lord puts it on your spirit to deal with it, you see. But Yabashim Yashai is going to show you miraculous things, you see. Because right now, you're doing something miraculous. You're doing something marvelous to be able to believe and to have, like, your whole heart set upon this when it's like, it, it seems like it's, there's no, it's like, there's, this, this doesn't make sense, you see. So the Lord's going to do certain things that look like they might not make sense in the days to come. Like, the spiritual powers, all right being able to do miracles these these type of things are coming for the elect because right now they're doing something out of the world so they're going to get that they're going to get that back you reap what you sow you do something out of the world man you're going to get something out of the world you see Bas i mean basically um and it tells you in songs right quick okay uh so you know this right here this just give, giving you more hope man to to keep on pushing it and to understand look don't look at your life and be like what was me because you're not where you want to be or whatnot, man. You know, you're going through too many downs in this truth. You see, look, you got to understand that this is just a part of your refining process. This is the book of Psalms 31. And let me slot. Oh, it's going to be 91. Okay, this is the book of Psalms chapter 91. And 9, it says, Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall there any plague come out of thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee and keep thee in thy way. So when all hell breaking loose, man, it says because you have made the Lord your refuge and your habitation, meaning that this was your everything, you know, you lived your life and you surrounded everything upon the most high as well. You see, see, because you did that, there shall no evil befall you, man. All right. Meaning that, you know, whatever is not of you, that whatever is not in your lot to happen, it's really not going to happen. All right. Although you might. You might come into certain times in that day, in them days, which are kind of scary. But ultimately, the Lord is going to show you miraculous things and bring you out of those things. You see, bring you out of those situations. All right, and, and your faith is just going to keep getting boosted and boosted and boosted. All right, but this is this is for those who trust in Him. You know, right? Uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I want to read this in Mark chapter four and thirty. It says, and He said. This is Yahushua speaking. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with the comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it was sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, <clears throat> it groweth up and becometh greater than all the herbs, and the shooteth out great branches, branches so that uh, the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it so you know right now this truth can seem can seem small and like the brother was saying you you might have so many downs that you think you just can't do it no more and wh whatever you know the lord put you through you know it's, it's your refining process so during the refinement you don't look the greatest but after the refinement is really the end result mm -hmm. anyway going back to what i was saying how well, well yeah i wish i was saying how the 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 mustard seed is the smallest all right so this this doesn't look too great right now you know it looks like you turn took a turn for the worse but in the end all right when the kingdom comes people all right people won't have anything to say when noah got when noah all right got in the boat with his family people had nothing to say no more all mm -hmm. right <laughs> See, yep. all right and nothing to say all right they was in the water <laughs> that, that was over with man so Alright, unless you had a precept, I also want to read this one. Alright. Here's 1 Corinthians 9 and 
24. We have read this, but I want to read it again. It says, Know ye not that they which run in the race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. Every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we wear it's like, but we and incorruptible. Yep. So we're, you know, we're trying to walk in this truth to, to, to the kingdom. All right. To get something bigger. Like we said, we see the bigger picture, you know, when people hear this truth, they can't see the bigger picture. All right. Cause the most high made these things, like it says in Syrac 39 and 24, they see it as a, a stumbling block, you know, so they're going to be destroyed with that stumbling block. But as for the holy, all right, that elect number, they're going to see this, which is the bigger picture and just walk through it. You see it and do the small things now and reap later. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so look, bro. Yeah, by Shemia Shai, he says he's going to reward every man according to his works as it shall be. So just understand that right now, this is the time to basically go hard. You see, this is the time to go hard and to basically build up your, your spiritual bank account. Not everyone's a hundred full, but you know, as far as you, as long as you, you know, you, you got some spiritual money up in that bank account, you got them works, man. They just know that that's going to be okay. Your protection, man. It's going to be everything in that day, you know? So yeah, man, we don't want to make this video just too long, but we just want to say, uh, all praises. Yabashi Masha, low willing the video. It was edifying. Till next time, shalom. Shalom.